You know, one of the things I love to do is play away games when it comes to the podcast. And today I have a, a guest, a young man, Ryan. My man, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah, yeah. You okay. Know, interesting. This is going to be the fir- first podcast out here. Yeah, but technically you're the host of this one. Mm. I'm going to be, you know, just answering some questions, you know, because you are a good question asker. You know what I mean? Mm. So I think that we got some... Uh, We got some uh, conversation here to get into, so let's wake it up. Let's do it. All right, let's start this. Well, one of the first things I actually wanted to know was what even got you into podcasting in the first place? That's the million dollar question. Yeah, we got to. You know what I mean? Um, For the ones that don't know this story, 2016, sitting in the backyard, opening my MacBook Air, which presently is with me in my backpack right now. Um, Just, I was in the backyard, opened up the, the laptop. There was a time, there was a place, there was a moment I had to speak into the camera. And honestly, one of the biggest things for me was just connecting, realizing when coming from the gym, being in that setting, that I could have the ability to use my voice to lead, right? Mm -hmm. And at the time I was training a lot of women, young women, ages from, let's go from 20 all the way up to about 55, 60. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And seeing how I could connect as as a young man in this world and really just spearhead how to build elite fitness with weight loss and things like that. So I came in 2016, October 31st, Battle Against Halloween. First episode was on social injustice issues, which is exclusively on my SoundCloud, which nobody has access to. Okay, we got the private episode up there. Yeah, so the first, it's so funny, the first 15 episodes is gonna be on um, SoundCloud, but I'm working on maybe doing a little re-release down the road, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. From the early stages of when I was talking and being all breathy and ranty and I was a different person, now I'm more cool, calm, collective. But I be unapologetically myself when I'm on these episodes now. I got you. We're gonna touch on that too. Let's talk about it, man, I'm here, let's go. So the next thing I was wondering was, what's been happening in your life recently that you've expected and something that you haven't been expecting? Wow. And that's why I say you ask some questions and and I'm going to, I want to give you your flowers right here. And I want to say something to you of, if you want to do whatever it is you want to do in your life, I believe you can do that. That's what I'm going to say to you first, because I think that if you were to pursue journalism, I think you have a career and I believe you have the skill set to get that done. That's what I'm going to say that. Right. And that's somebody being six and a half years in the podcasting Mm -hmm. and I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Some people think I have. Right. So to answer your question, You know, lately, there's a lot of love through the noise that I've been hearing. A lot of people have a lot of things to say, right? That's just how it comes down to with things of success, right? People don't understand it. They see you. They see you talking into a mic. They see you getting all these guests. You know, I have a lot of women come on my podcast. So instantly, I know that puts people into who is he to be talking to females about? health and fitness, overcoming adversity, building mindset, building a business, finding your inner personal self. And I think that because it's always a, how do I say this? There's always going to be a thing where people look at you and they think because of the color of your skin, Mm -hmm. you shouldn't be able to maneuver in certain areas and things like that. But what you got to do is you just got to rise the stakes and bet on yourself, put all the chips down. And that's what I do. And it's just a lot of love, man. Like I go out and people are like, yo, you're on my, on my TikTok for you page. And I'm like, damn, you know, I'm like, that's, that's love. You know what I mean? And somebody that here's the thing is a lot of people think this comes with ego, but it comes with confidence. And it comes when you see your community, you see your peers, you see your family, your friends, you see people that really resonate with you. They're like, Yo, like this guy's really doing his thing. And they put you into this like lane, into this bubble. And I'm just like, man, it's just love, love, peace, man. Love, peace and prosperity. You know? I love that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like when you, when you would have started, people would have been wondering like, wait, what's this guy doing? What, why is he trying to like go a different way? It's supposed to be a job. It's supposed to make something sef- like safe, secure. And then make sure that you can see a future that. Hmm. How do we even put into the words? Like. There's usually like a framework that people usually follow school, university, get a job, career, and you make sure that you kind of envision what's going to be there in your future. But then I feel like you bet on yourself, like you mentioned earlier, putting all the chips on one table, making sure that, you know what, I don't know what's on the other side of this wall. 
but we gonna find out. We gonna find out by just keep going. There's barriers and there's lanes and roads to cross mm-hmm. and jump over. It happens. It's mm-hmm. just part of life. It's a part of success, mm-hmm. right? When you're doing something different from the norm of people, mm-hmm. they'll tend to have a scenario where they're like, oh, he's doing something different. Let's look at what he's saying. Let's talk about what he's saying, but they don't ever highlight you into the right light because they have their own personal insecurities inside of themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing is you listen to the show, the show is all about, and it's all catered to becoming better, mm-hmm. 1% better, right? My guest that <laughs> a couple weeks ago said she's 2% better. So shout, shout us to Georgia for that. You know what I mean? And things like that. But for me, it's about being 1% better mindset, relationships, business work, Heck, if you still work a nine to five and you want to retire at the age of 64, 65, that's on you. That's not the lane I'm trying to go into. Mm-hmm. We want to get into financial freedom. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And to get financially free, you can't be underneath the microscope for much longer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get you. I get you. That does make sense. The brain's yeah. clear, it's percolating there. What's up, man? Talk yeah. to me. I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so... That makes sense. Like everything that you've mentioned about what you've expected makes sense. Are there any people specifically that have come back into your life recently or, you know, a couple <laughs> months ago that you're like, hmm, why are you back here now? What's going oh, on? Oh, Lord, this man wants to wake it up, man. You, you, <laughs> you, 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 you go what you're doing, man. You're media trained, eh? you media trained. <laughs> you, I feel like you're the Pierce, the Pierce Morgan in that chair there. Um, here's what I'll tell you. People come and go and your past will always try to resurface itself. Your past resurfaces itself because of what you're doing, right? And I think a lot of people quit on you because they didn't believe in your vision, they didn't believe in your dream. And when people don't, when people quit on you, it's because again, the projection of themselves, they weren't, they weren't ready for what it is. I had an ex, right? We keep, we keep the confines of how me and you both know each other and stuff like that, because it's not for the podcast and I don't need to have the trolls and the, you know, the, what do you call it? The fans, you know, frequent our area and things like that. But, um, she came up to me and said, Hey, I listen, I see the podcast. I see everything you're doing. And wow. It's just a great thing to see. A lot of my exes have all said that, Oh, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing, but they quit because they didn't recognize what was going on and that's totally fine but see what i say now is is that don't start celebrating and championing me when it's all said and done you had the time to do that but you didn't believe Mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and that's with anybody in your life that's your family that's your friends heck that can be your coworkers at times you know what i mean they don't believe in what it is you're saying what you're doing where you're going because they don't have it inside of themselves so all they got to do is sit there and just talk about it Mm -hmm. now look they start talking about you Mm -hmm. Okay, but after they left you or like whatever the separation looked like, do you think that they can still feel genuinely happy for you, even though they're not here with you? I think it's a comeback. I think they want to come back. I think they want okay. that story. They want to start that story again. Okay. Right. It's like the, the storybook, cha- <laughs> not the storybook changes. I'll say this. <laughs> the, the way that the series started they halted it at like, say season three, Mm -hmm. when you could have went season four, season five, Mm -hmm. everything eventually comes to an end, right? Friendships come to an end. Everything comes to an end, right? Everything's going to require change, but I think it's them acknowledging what's going on. I think they see you at the head of the table, right? And so they want to acknowledge you at the head of the table Mm -hmm. and they're like, Oh, okay. I see what he's up. Maybe they miss out. Well, heck if you missed out, that's not my problem. That's a you situation because I told you where I was going. Mm -hmm. And that's just coming into being a man that knows where he's going. Mm -hmm. That's not having a masculinity toxic viewpoint. That's being a man driving to where he wants to go. Mm -hmm. Men are supposed to lead, but when you lead, you build your community with inside yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I think where society is getting confused between the two. Because they look at somebody that may be strong into their approach. They have, you know, a very good sense of what they're doing. And they may look at it and say, oh, he's toxic or he has issues or he's problematic. No, that's you not understanding and opening and asking the right questions to know who's that person, what they do and where are they going? Mm -hmm. That's where you get your answers from. Mm -hmm. Uh, We talk, you talking about like a lot of topics that I'm about to 
ask deeply into. So let's talk about we're good. it. We're good. All right. So next one I was wondering was, as you've become more successful in the eyes of yourself and society, what are some lessons you've learned about human nature? It's a great question. Some lessons I've learned is that no matter what is going on with your, with your life, life, death, loss of job, mm -hmm. loss of friends, loss of family. Like, I mean, like the deep, deep stuff, right? Like we're not meant to be here for all of eternity. Yeah. So death happens no matter what, never quit, never quit, man. That's just the first thing first, never quit. Right. Um, last year was a very ch challenging time passing of a family friend and about three days it took me because it's going back about having your inner reflections of people. And what I realized is that that person wasn't really there for me as I was there for them. Right. And when you make the attempt, no matter what was said before, but when you make the attempt of why are we not closing the distance, why are we not closing the gap? You see how people really don't know how to deal with life or death scenarios and situations. Not everybody's built for it, but it's about that 1% approach, closing that gap, finding that distance, right? If you move good with a person, if you love a person, if you're wanting to be around that person and you want to get the best tips, tools, whatever it is you're wanting to get, never quit on that person because at some point in time, they will resent you for that. Mm -hmm. Now, do I resent this person? No, not anymore because I had to cut away to then go back into who it is that I am. That's why you need to know your boundaries and your non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. So boundaries and non-negotiables are two separate entities, but they all fall in place, whatever it is you're looking to do. So that's one of the things I learned is knowing your boundaries, knowing your non-negotiables, right? Because if you don't have those, people would run roughshod over through your life, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing is, like, there's going to be times where, heck, we don't want to get up. You know, we don't want to get up out of bed. And you know what you got to do? You sometimes got to put both of your feet on that hardwood floor, on that carpet, and you have to go. You just got to go. You know, many people say, oh, I don't want to work out. I'm too lazy. No, get up. Go for a walk. I don't even care if you go walk for 10 minutes. Go walk for 10 minutes, right? It's just, we tend, we tend to have this mindset where we want to quit on ourselves when things are at our low, but it's about who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. If you have the right family, the right friends, you got you to gotta find that inside yourself. A lot of people don't want to do that. I have the right inner circle because I know my boundaries. I know my non-negotiables, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The third thing I'll say to you is, is that you also have to, you just have to keep in mind that there's going to be days where we struggle. I struggle, but my struggles never show face, right? Some people look at me and like, is everything okay? Yeah, I'm good. Sometimes I'm just in my own head. You know what I mean? I'm just in my own head. I'm creating. When I'm like creating, I'm 24 seven, right? Creators create. Joel Budden said this, podcaster. Creators create 20, 25, eight, right? I'm not going to give anybody that breakdown. Now you can get on your Googles because I can't give you everything. Don't use chat GPT. You know what I mean? But for me, it's just, I'm always in that creative mindset. You know what I mean? And I always just continue to keep betting on myself. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah. I also feel like when you're at your lowest low, when you're mentioning in this, at the end of the second point, that's exactly where you find out who you are. When you're able to overcome that lowest low, you're like, wait, you're proving to yourself that you can do something like this. And then I feel like when you make a storyline where you make a story that's congruent, where you weave together all of your achievements, your, what did Alex Ramosi say? Your stacks of undeniable proof, and you make a congruent story out of it, you are able to more easily convince yourself to face like the next challenge that comes up ahead and like, wait, I've done this, 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 in increasing difficulty. I can definitely do this too. Let's go. Let's move forward. So I think that's a good point that you made there when you were talking about how when you're at your lowest low, making sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people and also find that within you. Okay. So next thing that I wanted to ask was how has your definition of success changed from when you were a young boy to the... Man, dropping on my full age. Thank you. Um, <laughs> this guy dropping on my full flipping age. Wow. Hello? 
Like, I try to stay off the grid with certain things. Um, Definition of success is different from everybody else. For me, success is not about money. Success is not always about money. Mm -hmm. Money is a tool, is a resource to live comfortably, to make you navigate in the world. Success is about who you impacting. That's for me. Who you impacting in this world? I'm a, I'm going to say something that I know a lot of people that are watching this are going to probably be able to resonate with. You don't know who you're impacting sometimes because there's a lot of people that are watching what you're doing and it's something that you do that makes them change and then they reach out to you down the road. I had a scenario a situation happen where it was many many moons ago. It was over let's say about 5 to 7 years ago. Random DM Facebook Messenger comes out of play. Gentleman comes out to me. He goes, listen, I see, used to look at a lot of things you used to post. And he said to me, he goes, I wanted to quit on myself and just give it and pack it all in. And he goes, one day you said something in a video. I don't know whatever video it was because it sold me many years ago. And he said, the first thing that I resonated with is that you were always about pushing to go forward no matter what happens. And he goes, I want to thank you. And he said, keep me anonymous because he labeled, he put his name. I'm never going to call it his name, right? Mm -hmm. But it, what it did, it made me say, yo, this is why I'm here. We're all here to lead and help people. But some people just want to take all the fruits and the resources and just store it for themselves. That's selfish mentality, right? So if you're, you know, able to, and body to have kids, you want to pass down whatever you learn to them, right? You don't want to just hoard all the resources for yourself, but you're going to be like, oh, that's different. That's my child. No, it's not. We all are in this place of life to help serve. And I think that's what a lot of us in this world have to be able to change that lens and be like, hey, let's be serving instead of being selfish. Because you see it so many times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like, have you heard of this place called the Burning Man? No. Okay, well, from my understanding of what Burning Man is, it's just a bunch of people. They go to somewhere, I think, in Salt Lake, Utah, okay. and they just do a bunch of drugs together. Okay. And then one psychedelics? Of the things, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Psychedelics, we, what everything. Right? Mm -hmm. And then one of the things that I heard in a podcast that they learned from themselves is that giving feels more fulfilling than taking. So I think that's what you're trying to get at. Absolutely, you know? man. Yeah, so Absolutely. You know, think about this. When you go to a grocery store... You're being served, right? When you go to a clothing store, you're being served. Everywhere we go into that requires a transaction is a part of service. But what we have to do is we have to make things transformational, not transactional. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Touch on that a little bit more. Oh, boy. You want to go into that, right? Uh -huh. That's that's a retail acronym. Um, when I used to work at Apple, there was about transformation before transactional, right? Because transactional is like, you want fries with that. So think about life. Oh, you know, we're having a, a exchange of energy. We're on a podcast. How would it look if I was just answering questions and let's go to the next thing? Mm -hmm. You're not, I'm not giving you any room to really talk or to breathe. I want to get through this because guess what? It's my own agenda. Yes. Even though you're interviewing me, we know what the whole circumstance is, but there's times where you're asking a question. I could just go, boom, let's get to the next question. I'm allowing you time to speak because that's the transformation versus the transactional. Mm -hmm. You know what I, I mean? You, I you. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Oh, that makes so much sense actually. Cause like I was in the mall yesterday and I was seeing how like I was getting treated by people when I was in the, when I was looking at clothes and I was like, wait, this feels like we're having like a fake conversation and it's like, yeah, yeah so do you want to buy this or no? So yeah. I guess you, I guess you. Like, there, there's certain places in retail um, and I'll say it like, you got places like Apple. Apple is transformation. It's all about transformation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of the brands that are out there, uh, I'm not going to throw any light on any of them, but I just go with my past of what it is. Apple is all about transformation, right? You see how they bring to life their technology, right? So a lot of these retail companies are starting to do it with their merchandise, with their products. And this is the Apple standards, the gold standard. You know what I mean? That's why they are top of the line. That's why they got more money than certain oil rigs out here. You know what I mean? That's just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And then also going back to success, when you meet someone and then you find out more about what they define as success, does that change your viewing of 
who they are and how you want to associate with them? There. <laughs> You what? Uh, you asked some questions, you know. <laughs> the thing is, there's in this space of podcasting or content creation. I just want to lead with this. There's a lot of people that want to just get in conversation with you because they feel like you can shortcut to their next chapter faster. There's no shortcuts in this book. There's no sort. You got to put the work in. Right. That's anything. You go to school. You go to university. You can't go from first year to fourth year. It's physically impossible. You got to go through the steps, right? If you're doing a nursing program, which is four years, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not going to go one to four. You got to go one, two, three, four. There's a reason why they have it in the structure of the book. So why don't we apply this to all foundations of life? Mm -hmm. My motto is this. When you're in a space of collaboration, there has to be an exchange. What's the collaboration? We've always had the exchange because from day one, from when I met you, you always asked me right questions. It was... I had to figure you out at one point in time. The first time you came up to me, I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> and I trolled you on the low, but I had to use that because I use humor to feel where is this, what's his, what's his angle here, mm -hmm. right? Because I know that there has to be some sort of angle. So we always had the exchange. You came from a genuine curiosity standpoint to ask the right questions because you want to learn. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants to learn. Some people just want to come out and be like, oh, let's collaborate. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me come on your podcast. I get these DMs all the time. Are you reading the room? What do you like? What do you have to serve? Like, what do you like? Okay. So you know what I do? I say, send me a, send me your, send me your pitch. Mm -hmm. And you know what they do? They just copy and paste a template with like times in new Roman with point font of 11. And I'm like, what is this? I'm not reading this. And it's all jumbled. It's all, it's like run on sentences. Mm -hmm. So you didn't do your work. You didn't do your research. When I go to get a guest, say for instance, when I had, let's go on this. When I had David Meltzer come on the podcast, right? I had to make sure I did my background research, found his PR guys, reached out to them. They said, hey, listen, we'll come on the show. We only got about 20 minutes. That made me have to say is, do I take this opportunity or do I just leave it? Mm -hmm. 20 minutes, you know what I did? I cut that episode down into 13 minutes, sorry. Mm. 13 minutes because I allowed time, Yeah. right? Because I know that I always give the gift of time back. Not every, many people want to give the gift of time back. You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of gems there that I know a lot of people are listening to right now or viewing and watching, and they're probably missing it. But it's just like you have to create the most direct approach of where it is you want to go, how you want to network and how you want to navigate. Right. Don't just slide into people's DM and say, yo, let's have a conversation. Let's let's just talk. No, you got to come up, like build something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What did you notice? So. It's funny because you put that energy out there, you get a lot of people that reach out to you, you know, and they're like, hey, listen, I listened to your episode 420 with such and such and such and such. This is how it made me feel. Hey, are you open to have a conversation? Okay, thank you. You know, thank you for listening to the episode, this and that, da, 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 da. And then you build that transaction right there, but then it becomes transformational. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When you start to get to know more about exactly. the other person. Exactly, exactly. Okay. okay. Okay, that does make sense. We're going to touch more on this as well. Talk we about it, man. All right, let's see what, what's next. Okay, so what were the jobs you had growing up and how did they help develop you into the person you are today? Because you talked about <laughs> Apple earlier, right? We got Apple. What else we got in there? So let's start from the, the basis. Um, curly, curly Q ice cream fired from there after two weeks. Fired, gone, <laughs> null and voided. They said, yo, you can't make ice cream. I couldn't do it. And honestly, that made me stop eating ice cream also, too, because like the smell constantly it was just too much um, ice cream. But I was like, what, 16, 17. And then I worked, you know, convention center. And that was a lot of physical labor. Like, I mean, working like that was my first grasp of working 12 hour shifts, lifting tables, building stages, you know, doing, you know, Christmas parties, things like that. So I was always in that physical labor and demand. I said, listen, I don't want to do this. I don't ever see myself being a physical laborer person. And then I went from that to condensing a program uh, for computer programming, which is supposed to be two years into eight months. That showed me about being laser focused in my approach, being and hitting targets that I needed to hit because I had a test every single week. So from Monday to Friday, you're reading a thick book like this, like 25 pages a night. Mm -hmm. and them chapters are long ass chapters. I'm sitting there like, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Right. But it showed me perseverance, always being the able, always having the ability, sorry, 
to persevere. So then going forward, I'm taking you down a journey here. Mm -hmm. I did not know what I wanted to do. And I was sitting here, I'm like, I'm at the convention center. I'm like, yo, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do this? So I was thinking about surrounding areas for tech, Kitchener, Toronto, kind of fell through. Apple, when they built the Apple store here in the city, I was like, okay, let me apply. Let's see what happens. Out of the 1,500 applicants, right, what they took on 100 people at the time, and I was one of those 100. And what it showed me is I never had a voice. So a lot of people hear me talk, and they're like, okay, so where does this all come from? Here's the, here's the fun facts. When I worked inventory at the back of Apple, right, I didn't really have a chance to talk to many people. But every time I'd run the product out to the guest or to the customer, whatever you want to call it, there was a lot of just, thank you, da 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 whatever, blah, blah, blah. And there was one moment where I got trapped on the floor and there was a customer that was talking to me about, I believe it was like an iPod touch. I already know how to run the system. So I basically had the device. I was like, I'll run it for you and bring it out. When I did that, because I was supposed to be in the back. We never really speak. We could interact with the um, customers, but they didn't want us because it's like you have the specialist to do that, which is whatever, it's fine. Because our, our main purpose is to run the product. So you need to have a certain amount of people if it's high traffic times or whatever. And when I had that conversation, I knew exactly what she wanted at the time. And it gave me that confidence to be like, yo, why am I in the back doing inventory when I should be on this floor having a conversation with customers, with guests, whatever you want to call them, to find the best solution for them? Mm -hmm. And instantly, bam. And I want to give a bit, you know, Sean Bennell was our manager at the time, Sean Bennell. And I looked at him and I said, "Is I'm not supposed to be back here much longer. And he goes, I'm going to try my hardest to get you out. And he said that and it was about six months to the day. I instantly transferred to the floor and instantly built that confidence. Mm -hmm. And the more I kept talking to customers, I kept talking to guests, the better it became, the better it became. And then that's when the transformation comes through with the fitness. So fitness, I was leading classes from anywhere between 15 to 30 people. I had to talk. We had to set up as stations. When you're doing stations, it's a lot of start and stop. I said, no, we ain't going to do this. I want to change the game. So the reason why my classes were so big, right? And you know what? I'm going to put, I'm going to, I'm going to put a, <laughs> I'm going to put a headshot on it. Fit club boot camps, right? That was the gym I started out at. And one of the things that I really admire is that I had the freedom to do what it is I needed to do. There were some things that made me leave that place, but that's a whole nother topic for another day. Maybe it might go in a book, but what I, what I did is I changed the game and the landscape of how classes were going to run. Because I said is I have the ability to command beyond the main focal point to say, Hey, listen, this is what it is. I want to do 15, 20 people, free weight, free weight workouts, bam, change the game because it constantly kept me talking. And it kept me having the confidence to find my voice. This is the instrument, mm -hmm. right? Now, this instrument that we have, like when you can talk, can get you in a whole lot of trouble, right? But I used it and I kept excelling to where 2016, I said, hey, listen, the podcast could have come out. That's a, that's, a lot, that's a little bit of the tea leaves. A lot of people don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like I said, this is Ask Rory. So this is what people I want. It. I rate it. I rate it. I like, about, I like the conversation about confidence because I've... I think back in 2020 or 2021 during COVID, I was listening to one of Charlemagne's podcasts and he was talking about this idea, competence equals confidence. And that's exactly what we were talking about right here. When I started working at Lulu, I felt awkward talking to people, but that's what I wanted to work at Lulu for. I wanted to be able to talk to people, refine my social skills, be more personable. And while I started working, I was an ass worker, I'm gonna be honest. I, I thought I was nice, but I was garbage all the way from like June to November. And I had very low confidence while interacting with guests. But then as I invested more in understanding what exactly we're selling and became more competent in understanding the process of how to sell an item, it gave me more confidence. And that's when it changed from you could, you could even say it this way, where it's just, just a transaction into I'm having genuine conversation with guests and then it's becoming transformational where I'm like actually making someone's day a little bit better while also selling the product that they were looking for. So I think- 
But that's I a good skill. That's a good skill set for you to lead to get you to where it is your next chapter is going to be, though. You know what I mean? No. What do you mean? Because so finding your voice, connecting with people is going to lead you to your next avenue in life, wherever it is you want to go. Right. Got you. I yeah. Because everything's a stepping stone. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh, everything's a stepping stone. Mm-hmm. Is viewing is viewing everything as a stepping stone kind of messed up or? No, nope. you have to learn from somewhere. Okay, are we all gonna right. touch on that? We're gonna touch mm-hmm. on that at all. I'm waiting for this question. When are we gonna get to that? Okay, okay, here. So, why do you seem so hard set on being unapologetically you, regardless of what people think of you? 